time. And I give the call to the honourable member for Werriwa. Thank you, Speaker. I rise to make my contribution to the Higher Education Support Amendment Response to the Australian Universities Accord Interim Report Bill 2023. If the modern tertiary sector has a father in Australia, it's my predecessor in Werriwa, the Honourable Gough Whitlam. In his pre-election speech in 1972, Whitlam said, we believe that a student's merit rather than the parent's wealth should decide who should benefit from the community's vast financial commitment to tertiary education. Gough fulfilled his commitment to the Australian public and in 1974 tertiary fees were abolished. This one act changed Australia, as we heard from the member for Ryan, and as my family were also um, a beneficiary of. This one act had a remarkable impact even now, almost 50 years later. The former member for Werriwa has made it all the more likely that bright, studious working class students have their intellectual abilities recognised. And it's for that reason that I'm delighted to acknowledge students in the electorate of Werriwa who have been recently awarded scholarships to attend the University of Sydney. These students are the first recipients of my Sydney scholarship program. Scholarship is valued at $8,500 a year for the duration of their undergraduate degree. There is a total of 682 students that have, that have been awarded the scholarship, 60 of whom live in suburbs across the electorate of Werriwa. Recipients live in Green Valley, Bonnyrigg, Bonnyrigg Heights, Macquarie Fields, Lunaire, Ashcroft and Hinchinbrook. The purpose of the program is to enable scholars and gifted students from low socio-economic parts of Sydney to be able to pursue their goals of a university education. The program will provide personalised assistance to each student to help them complete their studies to the best of their abilities. This is a life-changing level of support. It will enable people from my community to fulfil uh, a a chance to fulfil their full potential, a potential they might not otherwise be able to fill. And I'd like to thank the University of Sydney for their um, foresight to do that for, for students in my community. During the Hawke and Keating governments, Australia's and high schools significantly changed. Labor governments have continued to ensure the potential of students can be realised. More students are finishing Year 12, necessitating an increase in the number of places for university enrolment. As a result, the Dawkins Review was conducted and a vast suite of reforms were implemented. The result is another, was another education revolution. The two-tier system of colleges of advanced education and universities was abolished. New universities were formed and the gates were opened for massive increases in student numbers. My own electorate was one of the great beneficiaries. Local colleges like the one in MacArthur joined with the Hawkesbury, Nepean and Milpera to become what is now known as Western Sydney University and HECS was introduced. The basis of HEX was simple. Students would only pay tuition fees when they earned a decent salary. Whitlam and Dawkins policies are not as far apart as you may think, for at their core they were ta taking away the need for people to have money to attend university. The bill being debated today continues the work of Labor's commitments to education policies that provide opportunities for everyone. Announced in November last year, the University's Accord is a once-in-a-generation opportunity to review Australia's higher education sector and to transform it, form it so it works for the 21st century Australia. It has brought together Australians from a broad range of areas, universities, business and public policies. Much like Labor governments before, the Albanese government is committed to ensuring that higher education is not just for those who can afford or access it, and this is what the Accord seeks to do. Today's bill acts on the interim report of the Australian Universities Accord panel released recently. The report lists five actions as a matter of priority. One, that we create more university study hubs in both our regions and outer suburbs. Two, that we scrap the 50 per cent pass rule. Three, that we extend the demand-driven funding provided to Indigenous students. Mr Speaker, I wonder if I could seek leave to uh, continue my remarks. Is leave granted? No matter for one. Leave is granted. Can I give the call to the member for Fenner? 
I move the debate on this bill be adjourned to a later hour this day. Question before the House the debate be adjourned to a later hour this day. I put the question on all of those opinions say aye. Against no, I think the ayes have it. Earlier today, during the matter of public importance at approximately 4 pm, the member Griffith made remarks which offended members present, and they asked the Deputy Speaker to have the member for Griffith to withdraw the remarks. The member for Griffith twice refused the Deputy Speaker's request to withdraw the remarks. The matter was reported to me for consideration. After discussing the matter with the member for Griffith, he's indicated he's seeking the call, and I give him the call now. Yes, Mr Speaker, during the MPI, the Deputy Speaker asked me to withdraw comments. I hereby withdraw. I thank the member. And I call the clerk. Government Business Order of the Day number three, Higher Education Support Amendment, response to the Australian Universities Accord Interim Report Bill 2023, resumption of debate on the second reading and on the amendment moved by the member for Barker. The question now is that the amendment be agreed to. And I give the call to the honourable member for Werriwa. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, in continuation, four, that we ensure that there is funding certainty during the accord process. Five, that state and territory governments are involved in improving university governance. The Albanese go government has responded and has committed to implementing each of these recommendations. In response to the first recommendation, the government will establish up to 20 additional regional university study hubs and establish up to 14 suburban university study hubs. For the last several years, students in Werriwa have had the benefit of campuses of the Western Sydney University and the University of Wollongong in Liverpool. Making access and travel available to students is, means that it is less costly for those seeking a university education, especially if you have caring responsibilities, making uni a university education so much more accessible in my community. So these hubs will make a real difference when they're implemented around the country. The government will also extend the higher education continuity guarantee for a further two years in response to recommendation four, providing funding certainty while the accord process is ongoing. Universities will also be required to invest the remaining funding from their grant for the year into additional support for students from disadvantaged backgrounds and groups as well as those from the regions. Recommendation 5 will also be implemented so university governance works better for both students and staff. The bill will implement recommendations 2 and 3 which require legislative amendments. The first aspect of this bill is to remove the punitive measures introduced by the former government that require students to pass 50 per cent of their units of study in order to remain eligible for a Commonwealth supported place and fee help assistance. In addition, there will also be new requirements and formal obligations for providers to support students in successfully completing their units of study. To strengthen this requirement, financial penalties will be applied to universities that fail to comply with their support obligations. Research has shown, Mr Deputy Speaker, that disadvantaged students are disproportionately impacted by the 50 per cent rule. More than 13,000 students have been affected. The Australian government should be helping students succeed, but this rule seeks to discourage and punish them. The abolition of this rule, in addition to the new requirements for providers, will assist those who need it to help them get through their course. The second aspect of this bill relates to extending demand-driven funding to metropolitan Indigenous students. Currently, all Indigenous students living in regional and remote areas are eligible for demand-driven Commonwealth-supported places where they meet academic en entry requirements. Under this amendment, all Indigenous students, regardless of where they lived, will be eligible for these places. That is, there will be no cap on the number of Indigenous students who can enrol in Commonwealth-supported places. It is estimated that this measure could double the number of Indigenous students at university in a decade. And what a wonderful outcome that would be, a transformative outcome that would change our nation for the better. It will work towards the Closing the Gap Outcome 6, that is, increasing the proportion of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people between 25 and 34 who have completed a tertiary quad qualification to 70 per cent by 2031. This measure has the backing and support of the sector and will be benefit First Nations people across the country. 
This bill will assist the disadvantaged to complete their university courses and open up our universities to Indigenous Australians, two of Gough Whitlam's great causes, two of <coughs> Labor's great causes. The amendments in this bill are welcome, not just for the changes they will bring, but also for the message they convey. convey. That is, education is front and centre of this government's agenda. Always was, always will be. I commend the bill to the House. I do thank the honourable